What's up guys? It's finally time to have the conversation. I know if you guys have watched my stream or you've seen my recent YouTube videos, you've seen me going this crazy build of Holy Thality Samira, Umbral Rush, into Dustblade, into Collector. I know what you guys are thinking. Oh, no crit? What what is what makes this build so good? Got you guys. I'm about to give you the rundown. So what makes the build so good is basically it's cheap. So you're hitting your power spike faster, which will allow you to snowball the game better. Okay. With crit, the items are more expensive and some of the items have worse build paths, specifically IE versus Dustblade. IE is 300 gold cheaper and it's BF sword, pickaxe and crit cloak, as opposed to Dustblade that is just call fields and dirt, which is made of all long swords. Being able to build like this allows you to hit power spikes better and allows you to snowball the game faster. That's basically the mindset behind the build. And you're still getting a good amount of burst to squishies, but it's less DPS to tanks. And overall, once you hit your crit scaling spikes, it'll be less damage. However, since you're getting more lethality items faster, the idea is that you're going to be stronger in the game. And also as Samira, your whole stick is snowballing ending the game fast um this build kind of fits that narrative better um and it also allows more diversity with crit i feel like you're locked into certain items like collector shobo bloodthirster since you're not relying on crit with this build you can just build flat ad items so some items that you wouldn't really think of usually you can now think of like outside the box for example edge of night uh, usually you wouldn't fit that into your build because you'd be losing a lot of damage not going crit if you're going IE. However, since you're going a critless build, you can build pretty much any lethality item you want that can fit the scenario. Um, another item like that is Serpent's Fang. Yes, you can fit Serpent's Fang and Edge of Night into your crit builds, but you'll be losing a lot more damage by not building crit with IE. Another good part about this build is you're gaining that burst damage leading and giving you a better mid game against squishies. Whereas with IE and collector or shield bow, if you had rushed shield bow or whatever you rushed, but at your 40% crit, you're not going to be as strong. And that's just how it is with lethality. Since you'll be around three items, whereas with crit, you'll be at around two items at the time. Um, you're not going to be as strong in, into your mid game. The good thing about crit, is that one, overall, it has a bigger spike. So with crit, uh, once you hit three items, if you're also at three items with lethality, like the crit is always gonna win out in terms of damage. The deal with crit versus lethality was never that, oh, like crit and lethality have similar damage. No, crit overall has more damage than lethality. The good part about lethality was never the damage. It was always the utility from items like Humus and Duskblade. That was always the selling point with going lethality. The reason you stopped going lethality before was because one, the items that were super cheap and efficient were now less efficient, you know, after the Duskblade nerf and after the utility getting nerfed, it was like, well, what's the point? But now with this build, it's like, you're still getting a good amount of utility. From certain items like edge of night dust blade even though it doesn't work on your old anymore still get it with this assassination burst build you can still get the invulnerability at times since you're not gonna only be killing people with your ult you're also going to be killing people with your normal combo as well and the fact that it's cheaper and letting you hit that spike faster leading into a better mid game allowing you to kind of end the game faster the bad parts about this build is one you fall off a lot harder um, two, you scale a lot worse. And three, you deal a lot less damage to tanks. But when people make the argument you deal less damage to tanks, it confuses me because it's like, as Samira, you're generally not a champ that really goes after tanks anyway. Generally, you are aiming like the squishy champions in the back line and you're aiming to one shot them and go after them. This build fits that narrative perfectly. Um, to caveat this, I brought on my friend Urison 
to discuss the bill with me. He actually has his own variation of the bill, which is similar to my own. He's actually the one who helped me come up with this build. Um, he's someone I respect a lot. He's another Hilo Samira, and I'll have his socials down in, in the description. All right, so brought my boy on, Urison. He's another challenger, Hilo Samira. Talk about the build and talk about his own variation that he's been doing himself. Um, so what do you think about the, the build? When should I go it? And what are your thoughts on your variation? I think the Umbral build is super strong in lanes where, you know, you can dominate early, um, especially because of the, you know, the ability to get such a fast power spike and maintain tempo. It's, or keep a tempo advantage, I guess is better to say. Um, you're kind of always stronger than the opponent. If you're facing tankier enemies, it's definitely not worth it. But if you are facing not even squishy enemies, but just the enemy doesn't have an excessive amount of bruisers or tanks, and you can dominate the laning phase, that's where the build really shines. Um, when it comes to like my variation of Ingenious and Zombie Ward, I really like Zombie Ward because it's a more consistent way to get stacks, um, which is a bit counterproductive to Eyeball Collector or Eyeball Collection when, you know, I just said you have to snowball lane. But Zombie Ward's great at providing your team with a consistent source of vision, especially with Umbral. And I take Ingenious with it as well, which means that not only do you have Blue Trinket, Yellow Trinket, and Umbral up consistently, but it helps a lot with things like Duskblade being up more than once per fight. You're able to have, um, if you opt for GA, GA is up, it's like, I believe every minute rather than like every three or something like that. It's a very high cooldown reduction. Um, and once Ghostblade gets buffs here soon, you'll be able to use Ghostblade pretty much to lane. And then by the time you get to lane, it'll be back up once you're full ingenious stacks. Yeah, when, uh, when Ghostblade's buffed, I'm definitely gonna take that over dust. Like movement speed is OP, and uh, like now that it's gonna give damage, it also gives AD. It's gonna be like way more useful of a stat on its mythic passive than the uh, cooldown reduction and base movement speed dust. Um, yeah. Um. So is that like all your thoughts on the the build itself? or anything else any other things to keep in mind um oh yeah you should talk about the uh how you should use dust if you're gonna use dust with like clocking it with your w mm. i remember you yeah. told me about that and i've been and i just started like trying to emulate it yeah it's uh it's one of the samira bugs that right has kind of not it's been flying under the radar um it's pretty difficult to do consistently but once you're able to do it consistently, then it's a really good thing. Um, pretty much the way it works is you can still have Duskblade and Vulnerability during your ult, as long as you get a final kill with the second slash of your W. Um, so what I like to do is I'll start a kill with W E Q so that the second part of my W kills them. And I cast R as the slash goes off which will leave me with invulnerability. And like I said, it's kind of hard to do, but worst case scenario, you just don't get it and you just ult anyway. So there's not really a con to trying to do it every time you can. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I hope I see you again in the next video.